as far as exposure, um, we could dive really deep into, uh, you know, how to set your exposure absolutely perfectly. Um, but when you guys are starting out, we just want to give you the one thing that's going to basically work every single time. If you're in a fairly dark place with not a ton of light pollution and not a ton of light uh, of mood light, you can put these settings into your camera and get an exposure of the Milky Way. Simple as that. 20 seconds, f2.8, and ISO 3200, or as close as you can get to those settings. Maybe your lens doesn't go down to f2.8. That's okay. Shoot at f3.5. Um, these settings will work pretty much every time. And the reason behind that is just that the Milky Way is always the same brightness. Um, it's sort of like using the sunny 16 rule um, in daytime. We, you know, if, if the sun is shining, we can pretty much always use F11 or F16, uh, 125th at ISO 100. That, that'll basically give you a, a perfect exposure in the daytime. So the same thing applies for Milky Way photography. Um, we can use these settings as a place to start. So if you, if you don't want to sort of, you know, think about it too much, write down these settings and, and start here. So um, we, we will uh, talk about just a little bit about each of those settings and, and why we, ch we choose them. So um, different aperture numbers, different F numbers uh, of your lens uh, change the amount of light that your lens gathers. So if we're shooting at F2.8, that means that we have a, a much larger aperture and it allows our lens to gather more light. If we're shooting at f4, it stops that aperture down uh, uh, just a little bit and we're, we're gathering half that amount of light. So we're actually losing half the amount of light that we would have gotten at f2.8. And the, the, uh, the repercussion for collecting less light in pretty much any situation is that our, our uh, photograph is going to have more noise. So the, the lower the F number that we have, the less noise that we'll have in our images. So um, we generally like to recommend that everybody shoot at the lowest F number that their lens has. Um, that said, there are a few drawbacks. Uh, most lenses aren't, aren't the sharpest at their very lowest F number. So it can help a little bit if you're worried about sharpness to stop down. Um, but if you stop down too much, um, you're gonna end up going into those areas where you end, you're gonna have a noisier photograph. So, that's, that's just sort of the logic behind why we use a, a low F number. Do we have any questions uh, in the chat, uh, Beth, related to sort of exposure or uh, anything like that? Roland had asked, what white balance setting do you guys use? OK, yeah, we'll, we'll go into that in just a minute. Uh, Perfect. So uh, we'll talk about uh, shutter time here and then ISO real quick. And then we'll go into some of the other settings like white balance. So for shutter time, um, this is something that is uh, really important in astrophotography, understanding um, what the length of the shutter that we have is going to have, the, what effect that is going to have on our final image. So if you have too long of an exposure, of a, too long of a shutter time, something like our example on the left that we're showing here, um, you'll, what you'll start to experience is what we call star trailing. And sometimes this is the result that you want. Um, if you saw our presentation um, that we did last weekend, um, pre-conference for Out of Chicago, uh, that was actually the goal of the type of photography that we were doing there. So we were doing star trails images and we were, we were shooting for something like this. But um, if we're just going for our traditional Milky Way photography and trying to shoot for pinpoint stars, um, then we want to make sure that we're getting the longest exposure that we can get without those stars trailing. So just the two examples here are something that you might expect for around 200 seconds on the left and then on the right here, um, which is our recommended starter shutter time um, of 20 seconds here on the right. So um, if we want to sort of determine like what that shutter time should be for our specific equipment, um, there's a a rule that uh, called the 500 rule. There's a few variations. Some photographers prefer the 600 rule um, or even like a 700 rule. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, 500, I think it's, a, it's definitely a really good like happy medium and where we would suggest people to start. So um, if you're shooting on uh, say uh, like a not wide angle lens, maybe you're shooting on a 50 millimeter, 
Um, just because of the fact that, that you're going to be slightly more zoomed in, the apparent motion of the stars is going to be greater, so we'll end up having more star trailing. So if you want to try to minimize that a little bit, um, you can use the 500 rule in order to uh, determine a more suitable sh uh, shutter time. So it, the way that it works is fairly simple. Um, sorry for the math. <laughs> But it's basically you take the number 500 and you divide that by your lens's focal length, and that will give you a recommended shutter time. So, for example, uh, if we were shooting on a 50 millimeter, we just take 500, divide it by 50 mil uh, millimeters, and so 500 divided by 50 is 10. And so, a recommended shutter time for a 50 millimeter is about 10 seconds, um, and that should just give us like a you know a good place to start for that particular lens. If we were shooting on a 25 millimeter lens, uh, 500 divided by 25, that'd give us uh, 20 seconds. And that's one of the reasons why we suggest you start at around 20 seconds. Um, you know, most, uh, uh, we had recommended a wide angle lens that's gonna be, you know, something around 25 millimeters, 28 millimeters maybe, uh, maybe even wider, 18. We have an 18 millimeter lens here. Um, and so that 20 second mark is, is really great for most, fairly wide angle lenses. Um, and if you wanna kind of dive a little bit deeper, um, check out our calculator. We wrote a calculator that's on lonelyspec.com and you can enter in your uh, camera information. It'll do uh, focal length multiplying if you're shooting on an APS-C sensor or maybe even a micro four thirds sensor and it'll, it'll do all the math for you so you can determine what a good starting shutter time will be. Um, okay, so the last one is ISO. Um, and uh, shooting at high ISO is highly recommended. Um, I know that you don't usually hear that in photography. Um, usually we wanna shoot our lowest ISO, but things are a little bit different when it's very, very dark outside. And uh, one of the common misconceptions about cameras, uh, particularly related to uh, low light conditions, is that if we shoot at a higher ISO, we're gonna end up with more noise. Um, but surprisingly, that actually isn't the case, and uh, it's actually beneficial to shoot at a slightly higher ISO. And so most cameras actually have sort of a sweet spot when it comes to low light photography, um, where you actually want to, you know, you want to bump that ISO up a little bit. And that sweet spot tends to be around uh, ISO 3200, uh, maybe ISO 6400, um, newer cameras that number starting to go down a little bit. Um, but it's fairly safe to shoot at around ISO 3200 or 6400, especially for your first night photography shoots. Um, so that's something to, to keep in mind. If you end up shooting at ISO 100, you're very likely to get a, a, a much noisier photograph. Um, it does depend a little bit on your camera, and we've got extensive articles about that on Lonely Spec of how to sort of determine what the optimum ISO is for your camera. But for just starting out, you're gonna be pretty safe at ISO 3200. 